Hello everybody, this video is on elastic and inelastic collisions. In physics, collisions between objects can be classified into either elastic or inelastic collisions, each with their individual and unique characteristics that you need to know. In elastic collisions, masses will rebound off each other after they collide. And what makes elastic collisions unique is that the total kinetic energy of the system before and after the collision is conserved. This means the total kinetic energy of the objects before the collision should equal to the total kinetic energy of the objects after the collision. In inelastic collisions, masses typically will remain and stick together after they collide. In inelastic collisions, the total kinetic energy of the system is not conserved. This is the main difference between elastic and inelastic collisions. So when the objects collide, in elastic collisions, the objects will rebound off each other and the total kinetic energies will be the same as before the collision. In inelastic collisions, the objects will tend to stick and remain together and move in the same direction. And in this instance, the total kinetic energy is not the same as before the collision. While the two types of collisions are different in terms of the kinetic energies of the system, it is important to note that the total momentum of the system is still conserved in both elastic and inelastic collision. So the law of conservation of momentum applies in both of these cases. A two kilogram mass is moving east at five minutes per second and collides elastically with a four kilogram mass initially at rest. Calculate the velocities of the masses. So we have a two kilogram mass initially moving to the east at five meters per second. And this will eventually collide with another mass that weighs four kilograms. And the initial velocity here is zero, so zero meters per second. Before we consider whether this is an elastic or inelastic collision, we can already apply the law of conservation momentum. And that is the total momentum of the system, that is two kilograms multiplied by five meters per second, is equal to the total momentum of the two masses after the collision. The mass of the first object multiplied by its final velocity v1 plus the mass of the second object 4 kilograms multiplied by its velocity v2. This is the momentum before the collision and this is the momentum of the system after the collision. We can simplify this equation into 5 is equal to v1 plus 2v2. Let's call this our first equation. We can also apply the conservation of kinetic energy as this is given as an elastic collision. So that means the total kinetic energy before the collision, which is half mv squared before, should be equal to the total kinetic energy of the system half mv squared after. The kinetic energy before the collision is simply given by the kinetic energy of the first object alone as the second object was stationary. So it will be half times by two kilograms times by five meters per second squared. This is equal to the kinetic energy of this first object after the collision. So the mass is still two kilograms, but now we have V1 squared. And we also should add this to the kinetic energy of the second object. So four kilograms is the mass now, multiplied by V2 squared. We can simplify this equation by dividing half on both sides. So we'll get 50 equals 2v1 squared plus 4v2 squared. We can divide two on both sides and we'll get 25 equals to v1 squared plus 2v2 squared. Let's call this equation two. From equation one, I can rearrange this to make v1 the subject. So v1 from equation one equals to five minus two v2. And then I can substitute v1 into v1 squared in my second equation. So if we sub into equation two, we will have 25 equals to five minus two v2 bracket squared. So this is v1 squared plus two v2 squared. By expanding the square here, we have 25 minus 20 v2 plus four v2 squared plus 2v2 squared. 25 and 25 will cancel out on both sides and we'll have 20v2 plus 6v2 squared. 
we can cancel v2 on both sides and we have 20 equals to 6 v2 so v2 equals 3.3 meters per second to the right i know the velocity here is to the right because 3.3 is a positive value now what about the value of v1 well we can find the v1 value by using this equation that i've obtained from equation one so v1 equals to 5 minus 2 times by v2 so 2 times by 3.3 which is minus 1.67 meters per second and since this is minus 1.67 it means that the 2 kilogram mass will be moving to the left at 1.67 meters per second after they collide. A 2 kilogram mass is moving east at 8 meters per second, collides with a 4 kilogram mass initially moving west at 5 meters per second. The masses remain stuck together after the collision. Calculate the final velocity of the combined mass. Okay, so this is an example of an inelastic collision. We have the two objects moving towards each other before they collide. And after they collide, they will start moving in the same direction together as a combined mass of 6 kilograms. Now, whether they move to the left or right, I have to actually calculate the momentum after the collision in order to know. So by the law of conservation momentum, the momentum before the collision, which would be 2 kilograms multiplied by 8 meters per second, plus 4 kilograms multiply by minus 5 meters per second equals to the combined mass of the two masses 6 kilograms multiplied by the final velocity that's called a v so minus 4 equals to 6 times by v so v equals to minus 0 0.67 meters per second because my final velocity of the combined mass is negative that means i know it's heading this way at 0 0.67 meters per second after the collision Okay, now that we've found the velocity, let's show that this is in fact an inelastic collision. To do this, we should calculate the kinetic energy before and after the collision. If we can demonstrate that the kinetic energy after the collision is not the same as the initial kinetic energy of the system, we'll be able to show that this is in fact an inelastic collision. So the kinetic energy before the collision is given by the sum of the energies of the two masses. So half times by 2 kilograms times by 8 meters per second squared plus half times by 4 kilograms times by 5 meters per second squared, which is a value of 114 joules. The kinetic energy after the collision is equal to the kinetic energy of the combined mass, which would be half times by 6 kilograms multiplied by the speed that we found, which is 0. 67 meters per second squared and this gives a value of only 1.35 joules very clearly you can see that the total kinetic energy after the collided is far smaller than the total kinetic energy before the collision this is characteristic of an inelastic collision now you might be wondering where has this energy all gone well when objects collide they can produce a sound so the energy can be transformed into sound energy or acoustic energy. It can also produce heat. So some amount of this 114 joules may have been transformed into heat energy as well. So in inelastic collisions, the law of conservation of energy still applies, which means the total energy before the collision, regardless of the form of energy, should still equal to the total energy after the collision. However, as we know, in inelastic collisions, kinetic energy of the system is not conserved, which means that the kinetic energy must have been transformed into other energy forms. The two main examples of this will be the transformation into heat as well as sound. This concludes the video on elastic and inelastic collisions.